Here's a book you're going to want to grab, learn from, and uh, I hope to do the exact same thing. The book is Jack Kemp, The Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America. Authors, Mort Kondracki, Fred Barnes, they're on the line with us right now. You remember them from the Beltway Boys and many other TV appearances and Weekly Standard. We could go on and on about these two guys, but then we'd have no time to talk about the book. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Hey. Hi. Mort, how are you? We're very good. Thanks for taking time to be on with us this morning. I, I've got to admit, I'm one of those people who is uh, craving an opportunity to hit this book because I don't know all that much about Jack Kemp, so I guess that prompts the question, what got you involved in this? Well, um, when, I, when I finished writing columns and uh, Fox News replaced me with blondes, I, uh, <laughs> I, the, uh, uh, the Jack Kemp Foundation, which uh, is his family foundation, hired me to do an oral history of his, of his life. So I did interview, 100 interviews with football players and congressmen and staff members and family and stuff like that. And I realized that this guy who was, as we say in the, in the first sentence of the book, the most important politician of the 20th century who was not president, certainly the most important Republican, um, he never had a biography written about him, and so uh, I, you know, I set about to do it. And spent three years at the Library of Congress going through his papers, and uh, I discovered all along the way that my friend Fred Barnes had written the best stories of any single person uh, about Jack Kemp uh, over over time, and so he was natural for me to bring in to help me do the book. So here, here it is. <laughs> now it's out, and I'm so glad. <laughs> People might know uh, Jack Kemp, of course, from his uh, NFL career, and people might know Jack Kemp from being the, the vice presidential nominee in 1996, but between those two benchmarks is really where he made his, his biggest uh, impact, both on the, the Reagan Revolution, on tax cuts, and, and even influencing a, a young guy uh, named Newt Gingrich, right? Oh, yeah, Newt Gingrich was definitely one of his followers. Remember, Jack Kemp was elected in 1970, and by 1978, when Newt was elected from Georgia, uh, Kemp was well on his way to establishing the tax cut uh, that eventually was adopted by Ronald Reagan and, and produced the Reagan Revolution and 25 years of prosperity. So uh, there were a, many of the young congressmen, not only Newt Gingrich, but Ben Weber and, and uh, Dan Lundgren and Dan Coates, and, and many of them became uh, followers of Jack Kemp. Uh, but, that's, but that's not why we wrote the book. I mean, the, uh, both Morton and I agree that Kemp and his experience and what he said, what kind of Republican he was, is very relevant today where we have a stagnant economy and a somewhat uh, divided Republican Party. What would Jack Kemp think about the, the complete polarization that we have going on now, the demonization uh, from one side to the other, back and forth constantly? He would, have, he would hate it. As a matter of fact, he did hate it because uh, it was starting during, uh, during his lifetime. I mean, he, he kept writing columns. Uh, well after he retired from active politics uh, uh, about everything, and he he deplored it. Uh, he was a guy who never attacked anybody else on a personal basis. He always argued on the basis of uh, of, of ideas, and um, he didn't even like it when when his fellow Republicans went after uh, Jim Wright and, and finally got him toppled. Um, and this I I've said uh, any number of times that. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is the exact antithesis of uh, of Jack Kemp in every possible way. He insults people. Um, he uh, wants to kick all immigrants, you know, illegal immigrants, out of the country. He's against free trade. Um, the only thing that uh, that he resembles Kemp on, uh, other than high energy, is uh, tax reform, which Kemp I think would would like. But <laughs> Jeb's got one too, and um, and and. Uh, I think Jeb and, and uh, Jeb Bush and, and John Kasich and maybe Marco Rubio are closer to what Kemp would like in politicians. They're, you know, decent kind of people who don't indulge in character assassination and insults. Mort Kondracki, Fred Barnes with us. The book, Jack Kemp, The Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America. It's Riley and Scott on WROK. Jack Kemp focused on growth. Uh, and not austerity, and we hear that echoed in a lot of corners these days, not the least of which uh, Larry Kudlow on his radio show, which uh, people hear here on the, on the station, of course. Uh, what is the difference, and why is that important, the difference between, between talking about growth uh, versus austerity? Well, growth is, uh, it is what gives people, op uh, creates optimism. Uh, it reduces friction uh, among different parts of society. You know, Kemp said that uh, when we have a period of stagnation and slow growth, as we do now, 
uh, then uh, what happens is uh, 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 politicians uh, uh, lead people to clash with each other, race against race, north against south, rich against poor. We saw a lot of this in the Democratic uh, debate last night. Mm -hmm. They really uh, leaped on it, attacking the rich and blaming them for everything in American society. And, and Kemp was right about that. But when you have growth, it, it, it creates optimism and, peep and, uh, and higher wages, uh, and people uh, benefited from that. But here we have, dealt uh, with President Obama, will only, uh, only believes that more government spending can uh, help people and, and, and spur the economy. It doesn't work. Kemp was in favor of incentives through tax cuts, and we need that again. Check Kent, uh, Kemp, uh, liberal on on social policy because I've seen some people say that, but uh, you you guys point out, and, and I think rightfully so, not as much as some would assume. Well, he was he was, he certainly was uh, conservative on uh, on pro life issues, uh, although he didn't he didn't really emphasize it a lot, but he was definitely uh, pro life at every at every opportunity. But you no, know, he was he was liberal on and he confessed to being liberal on on racial issues. I mean, he he believed that uh, the Republican Party should once again become the party of Abraham Lincoln, welcoming to minorities. Um, he campaigned in uh, in in uh, inner cities. Uh, he he palled around with uh, with African Americans. I mean, it was said of him that that he had showered with more African Americans than most Republicans have ever met. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know, he regretted that uh, that he had missed the uh, the Civil Rights Revolution to take part in it, and he said, uh, this was my way of making up for it. So on, that, on those issues, uh, he was liberal. Uh, Jack Kemp, the Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America, that's the book available now. More Kondracki, Fred Barnes with us here, Riley and Scott on WROK. The name of the moment in Washington, D.C. is uh, Paul Ryan from nearby Janesville, Wisconsin. Uh, Jack Kemp was Paul Ryan's mentor. Uh, Paul Ryan worked for Jack Kemp. What do we need to understand about Jack Kemp to understand Paul Ryan. Well, I think you touched on one thing in particular, and that is growth. And you you don't get growth with high taxes, which of course were being advocated uh, by Democrats last night, particularly Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton in the Democratic debate. Uh, what you get there is less growth, more stagnation, more friction in in American society. Paul Ryan. Uh, I think has a tax cut plan that would be exactly Jack Kemp's that would reduce the top rate uh, down to 25 percent on the individual income and reduce the other rates as well. Uh, uh, Kemp uh, uh, believed that that and, and then it was proven by the success of his tax cut that was adopted by Ronald Reagan that mm -hmm. uh, uh, lower rates across the board uh, can spur uh, growth, investment, savings, work, and so on, all the things that make uh, American society better and more prosperous. The only difference between Paul Ryan and uh, and Jack Kemp was Kemp back in his day uh, uh, didn't worry about deficits and the national debt because they were much smaller than they are now. And, and Paul Ryan says, uh, well, look, we have to worry about that because the, the the huge deficits and the large national debt actually impede economic growth, and so we have to do something uh, about them along with providing uh, other incentives for investment and work and so on. The book is Jack Kemp, the Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America. Mort Kondracki, Fred Barnes are the authors. Uh, we often hear today, oh, you know, we, we want people to reach across the aisle. Reach across the aisle more. In today's parlance, it, it somewhat means, well, sacrifice your principles and do it. He was good at reaching across the aisle without sacrificing the principle. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he cooperated with, uh, with Democrats on, on a lot of stuff. And what's more, he was, he was friends with them, even when... Uh, he he just agreed with them on issues. Uh, he you know he he maintained uh, friendships across the aisle that he so that he could you know he could cross it and and get stuff done. But um, there was one uh, uh, Julian Dixon who was at at one point a Cal he's a California was a California congressman was head of the um, the Black Caucus. Um, it said that uh, Jack Kemp was uh, was the Black Caucus's favorite uh, Republican by far. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he teamed up with, with uh, Democrats on enterprise zones, which is cutting, cutting taxes and regulation in inner cities so that it would tr attract an investment. Uh, the Martin Luther King holiday, um, uh, tenant ownership of uh, public housing, you know, all, just uh, all kinds of stuff. And, he, and on foreign policy, he identified himself as a, uh, as, a, as a Scoop Jackson Democrat. Scoop Jackson was a senator from uh, 
Washington State, where uh, the, who was a hawk on foreign policy, and Kemp was uh, friends with him, and he was friends with Sam Nunn uh, of uh, of Georgia. So, yeah, he, he was he he was a bipartisan guy across the board. Uh, Jack Kemp was the president of the AFL Players Union for a while, and uh, was uh, friendly with with organized labor. A, a lot of uh, right to work push these days among Republicans, especially near us in Michigan, Wisconsin, and even talk about it in Springfield with uh, with our governor Bruce Rauner. What? How would how would Jack Kemp talk to those in the party today who are who are pushing uh, right to work laws and and perhaps trying to scale back some collective bargaining rights? Well, that uh, you know that is an interesting question because the labor movement had changed from when Jack was around in the seventies and eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, to what it is now, but he was uh, strongly against right-to-work laws because they were so strongly opposed to organized labor. And in other words, if you wanted to broaden uh, the base of the Republican Party and its support to include organized labor, you couldn't very well uh, be pushing for right-to-work laws. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure how he would feel about them now, but uh, he was certainly against them then, and uh, and he would he'd have to. Uh, make a new judgment on whether <laughs> labor has changed so much, uh, organized labor, that uh, maybe right-to-work laws are the thing we need. Jack, but, Kemp- you know, I, I think, you know, uh, John Kasich and, uh, made, a, made an effort to rein in public employee unions in, um, in, in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, the public employee unions are, and their pensions are driving states into bankruptcy, uh, and I, I can't believe that Kemp, looking at that situation, wouldn't say that they somehow, um, at least at least the cost of them, had to be reined in. Uh, now, you remember he was from Buffalo. Buffalo is a working class area, a lot of union members. I mean, his constituents were heavily unionized, probably less so now, but um, so, and, and he was a you know, and he was the union leader himself. He believed that he believed that collective bargaining was a was a sacred right. Um, so, uh, I you know, I, along with Fred, I'm I'm not exactly sure where he'd be, but I think he'd be stressed now. Jack, Kemp. yeah. Well, there is a big difference, though. We now the dominant unions are the public sector unions, government employees. Uh, back when Jack was around, it was the private unions, the mm-hmm. industrial unions, which have have pretty much fallen apart since then. Jack Kemp. And he was in favor, you know, he was in favor of school choice. He was in favor of vouchers for uh, giving parents the ability to send their kids to whatever school they wanted to instead of being condemned to uh, go to uh, terrible inner city schools. Now, that's, a, that's an issue on which uh, he would have been totally at odds with the teachers' unions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and he, he could not possibly have supported the teachers' union position on that. Jack Kemp, the Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America. That's the book. Mark Kondracki, Fred Barnes with us. It's Riley and Scott on WYOK. Just another minute or two. I wanted to ask, uh, Kemp was a, he was a fit ed, uh, phys ed major in, in college. Uh, he taught himself economics, reading uh, uh, Friedman and, and Hayek. He, he, you know, his career was, was in football. What did having that background, being a self-taught guy about economics, being a, a, a sports, a football guy in his professional career, how did that influence him? How did that uh, shape him as he went into a political career? What I think what it did was make him more, uh, uh, since he'd learned uh, the free market economics and reading even some of the most difficult economic writers in the, in the free market vein, uh, and, and as, an adult, and as an adult, he didn't learn it in college the way Paul, uh, uh, Paul Ryan did. Uh, it just made him more ferocious in, uh, in, in pursuing that and mm-hmm. trying to... Uh, 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 provide more uh, free market incentives uh, that would help everybody. You know, he really believed that, uh, as John F. Kennedy said, that a rising tide uh, lifts all boats. And, it, and he, he changed later in life to think, well, there's some at the bottom that may need a little help, but generally uh, that applies. You're going to want to grab this book. Jack Kemp, the bleeding heart conservative who changed America. The authors, Mark Kondracki, Fred Barnes. Guys, thank you very much for taking time to be on with us this morning. We wish you much success with the book. Okay, thank you so much for having us.